Hello engineers, welcome to civil nirman. In the previous two sessions, we have understand compression member, its failure modes, its behavior pattern. And in the second session, we have understand the codal provision and the equation part where I have give you the explanation regarding the steps to work out your design strength for compression member and the AE part that is the effective area if you haven't watched that video I recommend you to watch that videos first and then start here so for the first two videos links are provided in the description box now let's understand how you can work out the FCD value now as I suggest the steps we will start from here right so in order to calculate the FCD first of all we need to work out the lambda value which is the non-dimensional effective slenderness ratio and it will start with the parameter called Euler buckling stress so again as you can observe the equation pi square e divided by which is divided by KL upon R square so let's understand what is this so here this FCC Euler buckling stress now basically it depends on the effective length of the member when the compression load is applied on a particular member as you observe that it will tries when you apply the load it will try to buckle right and this deformation is not considered in the first order analysis part okay so basically code is giving guidelines to multiply an approximate length factor which partially consider this deformation of the member in terms of the effective length based on the support conditions okay now let's understand this support condition and the parameter effective length KL so what is KL as per the codal provision so let's understand that so see a basic definition for the effective length part it is described over here that the KL is calculated from the actual length of the member considering the rotational and the relative translation boundary condition at the ends and the actual length shall be taken as the length from center to center of its intersections with the supporting members in the plane of the buckling deformation so let me take you to the table 11 where the effective lens parameters are specified first just to give you an idea okay so here you can observe for the various conditions for the top and the bottom portion at two particular ends so it is provided in terms of translation and rotation so let's say if I talk about just to give you an example if I talk about this condition where both the ends are fixed as you can observe now due to this fixed support at the ends and rigidity if you apply a load the member will not completely deform right as you can observe it is going straight and then bending slightly so basically the form of curve in which a compression member tends to deflect depends upon the mode of its end fixtures now let me just give you a slight idea on this so let's take it here in each case there is a portion of the member of the length as you can observe over here so this is the point for this fixed condition so my effective length is this for this fixed case now if you assume this particular joint as a pin right what will happen as there is no moment in case of pin segment right at the end the member will deflect fully and here L effective is actually L so I just give you a brief for the fixed and pin case so basically code is suggesting that the effective length of a compression member is the distance between these points and therefore it should be derived from two cases the first one actual length and the end conditions now see in order to summarize every situation these end conditions are accounted for using the effective length factors in terms of k so all these 
and conditions factors are considered utilizing the k value which when multiplied by the actual length it will give you the effective length so basically your l effective is in the form of what k l right so if you observe in the code for various conditions for the translation and rotation the effective lens factor is specified here so from these various conditions you can identify that this effective length is the member length between these inflection points and this deform shape depends on the n support conditions right which is you are getting from the k value whether it is the translation or rotational moments which are allowed or not and based on that this factor k is calculated right now if you refer code further so let me take you to the code part to calculate the effective length we have three methods so the first method that i explain you is based on table 11 okay now code is giving you another two option for the frame structure the separate method is specified in table d1 so if i take you to the nx chair d here the determination of the effective length for the frames you can calculate for the non sway and sway frames this is the approximate method for the calculation of the effective length but if we don't consider the approx deformation shape in analysis so utilizing this equation effective length can be calculated which is further utilized for calculating the euler buckling stress and compression capacity we can derive right similarly there is one additional table 36 is specified from where you can work out the effective length for the step column but this particular is not implemented instead now if we want to use this for capacity calculation we need to manually work out the values and we have to provide this that using the appropriate length parameters so these two another methods are just for your information so i hope you are aware with the kl part now completely r is the minimum radius of gyration that you are already know right r value you can simply derive from the equation that you have to consider minimum i by a where i is the moment of inertia for a particular section and a is the cross sectional area right you have to consider r minimum so if you are considering any particular section let's say if we consider the rectangle x and this is y then you have to consider the minimum moment of inertia for the respective cross section and based on that you can work out the r value so effective slenderness ratio kl by r is clear to everyone right now let's understand the next parameter what is next parameter next parameter is phi right now in order to calculate the phi you need to determine the alpha value that is imperfection factor in the previous session i have already explained that your imperfection factor value alpha is depends on the buckling class why we have considered all this buckling class that also i have explained in the session too so you can revisit that session in order to understand this classification now just to give you a reminder see here the section 7 specifies that the compressive strength of the member is affected by these residual stresses initial bow and accidental eccentricities of the load now to account for all these factors right the strength of the member subjected to axial compression it is defined by these various buckling classes and we have understand the workflow as well so in the workflow i have explain you that when the value of this alpha increases it will affect the phi value which increase the phi and ultimately as it is inversely proportional to the fcd value it will reduce your compressive strength okay so keep this point in mind so ultimately for a better class or for a good compression capacity your section should fall under the first two class which are better class with lesser value why because as you go up as you go 
further the values are increasing which will lead you to reduction in your compression capacity so good sections or sections with good capacity falls under first class and as you go further and value of alpha increase your section capacity decrease so first two classes are with good compression capacity and as you go further capacity will reduce so this point you have to keep in mind now let's understand how you can work out the imperfection factor alpha based on this buckling classes now to calculate the buckling class code is specifying you a table table 10 from which for the various section profiles you can work out the buckling class right so you can observe for the rolled eye section welded eye section hollow section welded box section channel and for all these parameters they have specified certain criteria over here and the buckling is specified about both the axes so this is your zz and this is your yy right so code is specifying you the buckling class for both the axes this is you can consider this is my a major axis and this one is the minor axis now let's understand this criteria that based on various category how you can determine your buckling class so let me take you to the equation first now let's first understand let's say if we have welded eye section or rolled eye section so how you can determine the buckling class two criteria are specified over here right the first is either your for this particular section this is your height this is your width of line now let's assume that if we have the first criteria if your section falls under this category h by bf is greater than 1.2 then again you have to work out these two equation that is related to thickness of flange so if your thickness of flange is less or equals to 40 mm right so for that category your buckling class about zz axis will be a and for the yy axis it will be b right so that is the first case under the category of h by bf now let's say if the thickness of flange is more than 40 mm that means it is if it is ranging between 40 to 100 mm then in that case your major axis buckling class that means the buckling class above buckling class above the major axis will falls under category b and for the yy axis it will falls under the category of c right so that's the first way or the first case now let's say if it doesn't fall in this category right so let's say if h by b f that is width of flange if it is less or equals to 1.2 so in that case you need to work out whether your thickness of flange is less than 100 mm or greater than 100 mm if it is in this first case in that case your z buckling about zz axis that is the major axis will be class p and for yy it is class c right similarly let's say if your thickness of flange is greater than 100 mm so in that case buckling about zz will be d and about yy it will be d now if you have observed over here the case right as you can observe as the classification based on thickness of flange is increasing your class values are increasing right which will ultimately reduce your capacity the lower value of buckling class is preferred right so a and b are with the good compression capacity as you go further capacity will reduce so as thickness of flange increases right it will reduce your capacity similarly you can identify for the welded section as well right in the same manner see if the thickness of flange is less than or equal to 40 mm it will falls under class b and for the minor axis yy it will falls under class c similarly if it is greater than 40 mm you can identify this class as c and d got it so i hope this is clear 
to you just to give you an idea we have considered these two examples right now let's switch to the code part now if you go further for the holo section any hot roll dot cold form there is no further calculation they have directly specified the buckling class as a and b that means holo sections are good in compression as it is for the first two class similarly if you go for the welded bo box section the class are specified and for the channel angle t and solid section you don't have to specify any calculations right for any of this category your buckling class is directly identified as buckling class c so for the limited category of the load for the lesser load values we usually prefer this particular section and hope this video helps don't just learn software learn concepts